<laughs> Welcome everyone to the mission of Afemola University. Professor Beatrice Olubukola Ogumba. On the title, Newborn Desire, the Sincere Milk, Advocating Breastfeeding for the Vulnerable. Professor Beatrice, in the year 1994, from the Home Economics Unit of the Department of to become a professor in September 2014. A master's and PhD degrees in public health and security programs from the Center for Development Innovation, Wageningen, Netherlands, and a certificate in nutrition in a changing global environment from the Hebrew University of Jerusalem, Israel. She is a registered dietitian of Nigeria, having completed an internship at the Obafemola University Teaching Hospital Complex in Leife. Professor Ogumba has over 40 publications in reputable national and international journals. She has attended and participated in over 40 national and international conferences and workshops. She was keynote speaker at some of these conferences. She has supervised several undergraduate students and mentored many postgraduate students. She has served as member of various committees at the departmental, faculty, college, and university levels at the Obafemi Law University. Her research interest is in maternal and child nutrition. She has contributed imme immensely to nutrition issues in the first 1,000 days of infant life, especially on issues of breastfeeding and complementary feeding practices. Professor Ogumba has, has authored two books, Dictionary of Nutrition 2014 and Breastfeeding, Getting the Answers in 2019. She was the executive producer of a drama sketch for behavior change communication on breastfeeding and complementary feeding practices. Pomoloyon Takotabo, which was sponsored by the Nestle Foundation. Thank you. At the professional level, she's a member of the Nutrition Society of Nigeria. She's the assistant editor of the Society's Journal and serves in its experts and education committees. She has been external examiner to several universities, including the University of Ibadan, the Federal University of Agriculture, Abe Okuta, Bowen University, Bangkok University, and so on. She has also assessed several prima facie qualified cases for promotion at the Obafem Law University and in various universities as well. Professor Beatrice Olubukola Ogumbo Ogumba has both national and international awards. She was awarded the Nestle Nutrition Institute Africa Scientific Award for Nutrition in Community. She also backed the prestige Anchor Leadership Empowerment and Capacity Building Awards for Women Empowerment Activists of the Year in 2019. She's a fellow of the African Women in our Cultural Research and Development Award, and a Fellow of Leadership for Environment and Development LEAD, an African Nutrition Leadership Program. Uh, that, that's an African Nutrition Leadership Program. She's a member of professional bodies such as Nutrition Society of Nigeria, African Nutrition Graduate Network, Federation of African Nutrition Societies, and American Society of Nutrition. She's married to Professor O.A. Ogumba, and the marriage is blessed with three exclusively breastfed children. I have the singular honor of introducing to you and presenting to you the inaugural lecturer today, Professor Beatrice Ogumba. You are welcome. Vice Chancellor, sir, Principal Officers of the University, Provosts, Deans and Directors, Members of Senate, Head of Department, Obafemi Aolo University staff, my dearest students, invited guests, members of the press, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, 
I want to start by giving glory to God Almighty, the source of all knowledge, who has spared my life to see this day and made me who I am today. May his name be praised now and forever. Mr. Vice Chancellor, sir, I am filled with joy and appreciation to God Almighty, who granted me the favor and opportunity to deliver the 376 inaugural lecture of the Obafemi Aola University in Leife, titled, Newborns Desire the Sincere Make, Advocating Breastfeeding for the Vulnerable. It's second from the newly established Department of Human Nutrition and, Di and Dietetics of the Obafemi Aola University in Leife, which is just two years old. I started my academic career at the Dan Oyo State College of Education in Leisha, where I studied home economics, contrary to my late uncle's advice to study accounting. I was not happy to study home economics because I thought it was only about cooking. I want to appreciate God for his guidance. Although I tried to change to accounting without success, God established his desire for my life when I gained admission into Obafemi Aola University in Leife to study home economics with specialization in food and nutrition. I was almost going off my track after my first degree, at which time I was already employed as a graduate assistant because Obafemi Aola University did not have a master's degree in nutrition. Today, there is a full-fledged department of women, nutrition, and dietetics in the university. I wish to appreciate the Faculty of Basic Medical Sciences, the Senate, and the Council of the University for the approval of the proposal that was developed under my leadership as a pioneer head of department. In my career decision-making, I must appreciate Professor Okusami and Professor Lobi in the hall today for their guidance. Both discussed with me on the same day as fate will have it, and I was advised to take my postgraduate studies in the Department of Human Nutrition at the University of Ibadan. Professor A.A. A. Jibowo was on my neck, as it were, while I was a graduate assistant to specialize in dietetics. However, due to my dislike for hospital practice, I delayed the process of becoming a registered dietitian. Today, I'm eternally grateful to God Almighty that I'm a both professor of public health nutrition and a registered dietitian. My PhD degree in public health nutrition has provided a platform for me to get into my passion for children, their growth and development the first 1,000 days of life. The first 1,000 days video by the World Vision Child at Australia titled In the Never Neverland, a story. Once upon a time, there was a little boy named Peter Pan. Once he upon a time, never, never there was land. a little boy named Everyone Peter Pan. Everyone knew him as the boy who made he never, live never, in grow Never up. Neverland. May never, Everyone never knew reach him average as the boy who may, may never, never, never grow never up. Escape the threat may of never, never and reach disease. average height. May never, never, may do never, well never in escape the threat may of never, infection never and disease. Or may never, never do well in school. May never, never get a job. Or contribute to his country's economy. And may never, never escape the vicious cycle of poverty. All because he. My research and community service has been to reverse the storyline in the Never Never Land to a situation where children grow up, reach average height, escape the threat of infection and disease, do well in school, get a job, contribute to the country's economy, escape the vicious circle of poverty, have the right nutrition in their first 1,000 days of life. Nigeria has the second highest body of stunted children in the world, with a national prevalence of 32% of children under five. Stunting is usually due to malnutrition and is usually starts in the first 1,000 days of life. At every feeding, breastfeeding, and complementary feeding stage during the 1,000 days of life, a child's rapid development brain is vulnerable to poor nutrition, neglect, and the toxic stress that comes along with hunger and food insecurity. The damage done to a child's development can be profound and irreversible. At this stage, breastfeeding is the foundation for life which when done exclusively and continuously until the infant's second birthday secures the child's health and development. For infant not being breastfed is associated with the incidence of infectious morbidity, including gastroenteritis and pneumonia, 
as well as elevated risk of childhood obesity, type 1 and type 2 diabetes, leukemia, and sudden infant death syndrome. Knowledge about exclusivity and continued breastfeeding can be obtained during antenatal care. Antenatal care is the care a woman receives throughout pregnancy to ensure that both the mother and child remain healthy. Resources to improve knowledge on nutrition and health and promote preventive health practices. Timely and frequent use of ANC enable delivery of essential services. Women can learn from skilled personnel and receive social, emotional, and psychological support at this critical time of their lives. Unfortunately, many women in developing countries do not receive such care. Women who do not attend ANC or do so late are more prone to preeclampsia, eclampsia, and anemia, besides severe birth outcome, including preterm birth, low birth, and stillbirth. From our studies, pregnant women did not start ANC until the second trimester, and some as late as the third trimester. Half of the mother delay in starting, while 49.6 miss ANC without obvious reason. My studies shows that those that attend ANC have the advantage of being able to spot pregnancy complications and correct their path step volume in the prevention of anemia in pregnancy. Anemia has been linked to pregnancy complications before and after birth. If not treated, it increases risk of preterm delivery and postpartum maternal infection, low birth weight, reduced breast milk, and iron deficiency in the first three months of the baby's life. In antenatal care as well, Knowledge is gained on diet, breastfeeding, hygiene, exercise, and birth control. The percentage that got the advantage of antenatal care classes, however, was low in this study, probably because of the delay in attending ANC. Factors that influence the use of ANC are discovered in our study, are accessibility to care centers, duration of ANC program in the hospital, facilities available in the hospital, and cost of transport to the ANC center. Evidence indicates if women in pregnancy or adolescent girls had access to high quality antenatal care, maternal death might have been avoided. The new model of ANC increases maternal and fetal assessment to detect complications, improve communication between health providers and pregnant women, and increase the likelihood of positive pregnancy outcome. It recommends pregnant women to have their first contact during the first 12-week gestation with subsequent contact taking place at 20, 26, 30, 34, 36, 38, and 40 weeks gestation. Breastfeeding, the foundation for life. Mr. Vice Chancellor, sir, scientifically, there is evidence that a mother's breast milk is the best food for optimal health of the infant. A mother's breast milk alone provides all the nutrients necessary for a baby's physical and mental development for the first six months, with the added benefit of natural immunity against numerous diseases. Estimates produced by the Lancet series reveal that increasing breastfeeding to near universal level for infants and young children will save over 800,000 children's lives a year globally, and equivalent to 30% of all deaths in children under two, and prevent an extra 20,000 deaths from breast cancer every year. Optimal breastfeeding consists of early initiation within an hour of birth, exclusive breastfeeding from birth to six months, and up to two years of age and beyond. Initiation of breastfeeding. Early initiation of breastfeeding is defined as provision of mother's breast milk to infants within the first hour of birth and ensure that the newborn receives colostrum. Colostrum has more protein and fewer carbohydrates and fat than matured breast milk. Colostrum is rich in secretory immunoglobulin A, which helps to protect the infant from infection. Despite the evidence of the beneficial effect of breastfeeding, EIBF practices remain low in Nigeria. The initiation of breastfeeding early after childbirth and practice of EBL during the first month, have been associated with reduced neonality mortality and morbidity in all our studies. Almost all the children's studies were breastfed, either based on exclusive breastfeeding or misfeeding. Breastfeeding was initiated within the first hour of birth. 
some of the children got the advantage of the immunological properties provided by colostrum, according to the National Nutrition and Health Survey of 2018. Breastfeeding initiation for infants in Nigeria is at 42%. 29% are breastfed exclusively, while only 24% of children are breastfed with 20 months of age. Maternal infant variables, such as lack of breast milk, a parent HIV status, and perinatal illness, cultural practices like the discussing of colostrum, and social factors like rural habitation and place of delivery are all linked to delay commencement of breastfeeding. Prelactive feeding. The World Health Organization defines prelactive feeding as any fluid given to a child before breast milk starts. My study shows that almost most mothers initiated breastfeeding on time. Infants frequently receive other liquids apart from breast milk. Children receive prelactive feeds such as water, concussion, glucose, and infant formulas. As much as 85.3% of mothers in the rural area use water as prelactive field, while 65.4% of those in urban communities use infant formula. Younger mothers below 30 years of age use prelactive field more than mothers between 40 to 50 years. Our study assessed the breastfeeding preparedness and practice of unmarried mothers. Most of them plan to initiate breastfeeding between zero to six hours of birth, but we give prelactive pills. All prelactive pills were given for reasons other than nourishment, ranging from cultural practices to soothe the throat or bowel, or that the colostrum was too heavy for the newborn to absorb. Other factors identified were cesarean section, the lay in the leg down of breast milk, and mother's milk deemed insufficient, which have always interfered with the exclusivity of breastfeeding. Progress in the adoption of exclusive breastfeeding in Nigeria has been slow. And my study has linked this to the observation that breastfeeding is a practice that is strongly rooted in culture. The cultural practice of giving water, medicinal herb, and infant formula to pacify a, brain, a crying baby or quench a task of the baby or to relieve abdominal pain actually pose greater risk to a child's health as the digestive system of the child is nowhere matured to start digesting other food. Relative meals often include pollutants and have lower nutritional and immunological value. Exclusive breastfeeding. Mr. Vice Chancellor, sir, WHO defined exclusive breastfeeding as an infant receiving only breast milk without food, drink, and water. A non-breastfed child is 14 times more likely to die in the first six months of life than an exclusively breastfed child. Data from NDHS 2018 says EPF rates in Nigeria are not even close to the global rate of 41%. In Nigeria, the prevalence of EBF is 13%, 17%, 29% in 2008, 2013, and 2018, respectively, with just increase of 16% in 20 years. And currently, the prevalence of EBF in Nigeria is one of the lowest in Africa. In our studies, Nigeria did not achieve the 50% projection by World Health Assembly. Mothers in the urban communities practice EBF more than their rural counterparts. Most urban mothers do not breastfeed up to the age of two years. As breastfeeding was terminated between 12 to 18 months, mothers in the rural areas, however, had longer duration of breastfeeding. But you are married in our studies, intended duration of breastfeeding varied, and few intend to practice EBF for 12 months instead of the recommend, recommended duration of six months, showing lack of knowledge about the exclusivity of breastfeeding. In our study, traditional practices of the use of water and concussion interfere with EBF and is prevalent in the rural areas. Our study also shows that breastfeeding decisions were influenced by eight factors. These include maternal health, maternal job, spouse decision, maternal grandmother, mother's-in-law, educational status, friends, and inadequate breast milk production. The decision to feed or bottle feed was found to be more often made before pregnancy. Generally, our studies have established that the feeding practices which negatively influence the child's growth rate 
are largely determined by mother's breastfeeding initiation, duration, and frequency of breastfeeding. Breastfeeding and breast milk substitutes. Breast milk substitutes, also known as infant formula, are commercially prepared products. It's important to know that while formula can provide nutrition, breast milk remains the gold standard due to its unique composition and health benefits. In some situations, a mother might choose to engage in misfeeding, which involves a combination of breastfeeding and infant formula. The prevalence of BMS with bottle feeding among children 0 to 6 months was 26.3 in our study in southwestern Nigeria, causing increased incidence of diarrhea in infants. It must be emphasized that formula lacks the natural antibodies, enzymes, and immune boosting factors present in breast milk, which can leave infants more susceptible to infections and disease. As reported by our study, infant formula production and consumption is one of the major threats not only to exclusive breastfeeding, but also to the environment. Breastfeeding produces zero waste in comparison with infant formula. In contrast to breast milk, Artificial baby milk pro produce pollutes the land here and water and uses up natural resources. Breast milk remains the only readily available, safe, and environmentally friendly source of infant feeding, especially in the first six months of an infant life. Support for breastfeeding. Mr. Vice Chancellor, sir, breastfeeding promotion has always been through the Baby Friendly Hospital Initiative, BFHR which was launched by WHO and UNICEF in 1991, following the Innocenti Declaration of 1990. Nigeria also, through UNICEF, launched the BFHI, and the 10th step to successful breastfeeding was made available to guide the healthcare provider in its implementation. Our study investigated the several clinical practices of the BFHI. It was found out that the healthcare provider focused only on a few of the seven clinical practices and mothers therefore did not have the full benefit of the BFHI. The focus on only few practices is because of the unstructured nature of egg talks in antenatal care. The practice of expression of breast milk was found to be low among mothers because it was not well discussed. Some women were trained on tummy to tummy position, another breastfeeding hold, the use of supportive breastfeeding pillow, and only few were able to identify hunger signs in infants. Few mothers received counsel on the use and risk of feeding bottles, teeth, and pacifiers. Only half of the mothers initiated breastfeeding in less than one hour of birth because of lack of support. Support groups are to allow parents and their infants have timely and continuous access to support and care. There is need for a change in clinical practices to support breastfeeding from pregnancy until after birth and discharge from hospital. None of the mothers was found to experience the last of the clinical practices, which is to coordinate mothers to existing support group. However, three of, out of five of the mothers received support from their mother's in-law. One out of two had mother-to-mother -mother support. Social network and its influence on breastfeeding practices. The influence of the social network began as soon as the children were born. In the study area, the major social network for mothers were the nurses, grandmothers of infants, fathers, mothers-in-laws and doctors. Others were employers, nutritionists and friends. The lowest in rank was the media. In our study, it shows that decision on initiation of breastfeeding, feeding of colostrum and prolactic feeding were in flesh soon after birth. As mothers were discharged from hospital, there was an increase in the number of influences on maternal, infant, and young child nutrition, which includes the father, friends, grandmothers, mothers-in-law. However, it is noted that even after discharge, nurses, grandmothers, mothers-in-law remain in the network throughout, except for the doctors whose support greatly reduced after discharge from the hospital. Decision about the use of express milk use of feeding bottles, introduction of complementary feeding, and termination of breastfeeding were taken when the children got home. The use of express meal was influenced by the nurses. Also in our studies, counseling and support in health facilities were found to have led 
So an increase in the number of mothers who initiate breastfeeding within the first hour of birth. Our study also showed that majority of the women had positive attitude towards breastfeeding. We are women are giving up on breastfeeding or introduce formula feeding early. This was usually due to lack of support rather than lack of desire to breastfeed. Therefore, improving access to supportive, culturally appropriate, and proactive antenatal care and as on support in the days immediately after birth is recommended as an important strategy for improving exclusivity and longer duration for breastfeeding. Grandmother support in breastfeeding. From our research, it shows that grandmothers had influence on the feeding practices of their daughters. More than one third of the grandchildren were fed with other liquids and food apart from breast milk before the age of six months. Only one third of the grandchild were breastfed after first birthday. Grandmother influence is more on prelactive feeding as confirmed by our study. More than half of the grandmother had high breastfeeding knowledge, which does not translate to positive attitude towards breastfeeding. Women supporting their daughters to breastfeed require consistent evidence-based breastfeeding information in formats that allow them to contribute their own experience and practical assistance. Father's involvement and support in breastfeeding. Mr. Vice Chancellor, sir, virtually in every culture, infant care is almost exclusively a woman's realm. No doubt, partly, since only women can breastfeed. Ideally, however, the father has important roles to play, both in sharing child care responsibilities and in providing crucial support to the vulnerable mother-child they had in early weeks and months of life. In our study, the determinants of fathers' involvement in child care are age of fathers, levels of education, location, and age of child. Younger fathers, especially between the ages of 30 to 39, were more involved in child care compared to older counterparts. They are open to the idea of interchangeability of roles, especially with their young children. Fathers in urban communities participated more than those in rural communities because the decisions in rural communities are more influenced by cultural practices and values. From our research, women who experienced positive and active support from their partners showed higher confidence in their ability to breastfeed than women whose partners were ambivalent or negative towards breastfeeding. Our study also assessed paternal attitude and involvement in breastfeeding. In the study area, paternal attitude towards breastfeeding was indifferent. Fathers also recognized that babies fed breast milk are elder than babies who have formula fed, but agreed that formula feeding is the better choice if a mother plans to work outside the home and that breastfeeding is not feasible in busy economy. Fathers do not read books or articles on breastfeeding. Neither do they discuss ideas for solving breastfeeding problems. In our studies, fathers were seen to have low household involvement, educational and professional support, and advocacy for breastfeeding. Maternal employment and support for breastfeeding. Mr. Vice Chancellor, sir, our study found a significant association between breastfeeding and maternal places of employment. Maternal place of employment positively influenced the adoption of appropriate infant feeding practices. It is noteworthy that the federal government that has approved six months paid maternity leave in Nigeria, and it has been domesticated in some states to support EBF at workplaces. The three months duration compromises the duration of exclusive breastfeeding as it influences early introduction of complementary food. Our research shows that when a mother's workplace and schedule cannot accommodate exclusive breastfeeding, she tends to change the infant feeding in favor of complementation. Our study shows that intending mothers plan to express best milk at work, offset feeding times, and practice misfeeding. When mothers are aware of the benefits of breastfeeding and the recommended MIYCN, when they are trained in lactation management, supported in workplace and at home, then maternal employment will not be a barrier 
in adopting appropriate practices. Breastfeeding interventions. We have two interventions, the drama and the short message services. The use of mobile phone devices to support medical and public health practice and research is gaining increased attention as it provides opportunity to rapidly connect people, therefore reducing delay across the chain of health decision. Our study has said the impact of the use of SMS as an intervention in increasing knowledge about breastfeeding among female undergraduate students. Students receive one SMS daily on breastfeeding for 30 days. Knowledge of breastfeeding improves significantly after intervention. Respondents compared to baseline. This increased more than 10% for all knowledge statements. Another study applied the use of drama as a form of behavior change communication on breastfeeding and complementary feeding practices. The drama improved frequency of breastfeeding, duration of each breastfeeding episode, breastfeeding practices, and the use of air care facilities after intervention. Mothers also learn new skills, receive information on recommended MIYCM practices. The study recommended the use of drama during the waiting period of mothers at antenatal care clinics which could serve both as entertainment and tool for improving knowledge, skills, and appropriate breastfeeding practices. Complementary feeding. Complementary food comes in different forms from many cultures. Our studies have revealed varying time of complementary feeding. In most of our study area, the infant first food is pap, which is less nutrient dense. Pap is often low in calories, proteins, micronutrient and often diluted with water. Mothers introduce complementary food as early as one month, especially in rural areas, and as late as nine months in urban communities. The early introduction of PAP displays nutrients from breast milk, decreased nursing frequency and duration. It was discovered in our study that stunting occurred early because of the early introduction of complementary food when the concerned children are supposed to be on exclusive breastfeeding. The prevalence of stunting in our study was 35.9 in 2004 and 40% in 2011. The story is still the same in 2022, as stunting is still as high as 40% in Nigeria. This has obviously showed that we are yet to conquer the menace of stunting in under five children. Predictors of stunting in our studies our attendance at antenatal care, lactation management, maternal caring practices, and hygiene, community service. Mr. Vice Chancellor, sir, my studies documented above and various experiences have led me to engage in exclusive breastfeeding advocacy and training as community service. My experience as a first time mother was disturbing and very challenging. My first child will not just grow. So I thought he had health problems. I spent so much money on tests that he did not need. Until finally, a pediatrician taught me how to latch my baby on the breast, and it then started growing. At this point, I need to appreciate Professor Ebuade Juibe, who taught me how to breastfeed in our office at the Obafemi Awolowo University Teaching Hospital. I thought breastfeeding would come naturally, without challenges. But I was wrong. Breastfeeding is a skill that must be learned by both mother and child to produce a wonderful experience. This experience triggered my zeal to research into breastfeeding and to train breastfeeding mothers on appropriate and recommended MIYCM practices. Poor EBF rates in Nigeria have been traced to lack of postnatal intervention, guidance, and support for mothers. This is because the postnatal influence of health workers on breastfeeding reduced greatly after hospital discharge. To provide support for breastfeeding mothers, especially first time mothers, I established a non profit organization and breastfeeding network, Maternal and Child Resource Initiative on Breastfeeding MACRIP. <laughs> MACRIP was launched in Obafemi Awolowo University, and the goal is to Look at optimal breastfeeding practices such as initiation, exclusivity, and duration. This will achieve true capacity building of healthcare professionals, 
mothers and all stakeholders in breastfeeding. Macrib also drive online advocacy on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter, and support for exclusivity and continued breastfeeding. Macrib has trained about 500 mothers, 300 community health workers, and 1,000 students. Yearly, Macrib celebrates the World Breastfeeding Week and was globally recognized by World Alliance for Breastfeeding Action with the award of certificates in 2021 and 2022 for celebrating the World Breastfeeding Week. Macrib is currently on the global map of WABA as one of the NGOs that celebrate World Breastfeeding Week globally. To put it on record, Macrib is the first indigenous NGO with focus on breastfeeding in Nigeria. The next two foundations sponsored drama was also used as community-based intervention during Macrib outreaches in schools, communities, and hospitals. I am the executive producer of the behavior change communication drama on breastfeeding and complementary feeding practices titled Form Loyon Takotabu. Professor Femi Ajayi, a community, a communication expert, and late Professor FM Oguleye, and the Department of Dramatic Art of the Obafemi Awolo University were part of the research team. Let's watch the drama on prelactive feeding. Ati wi pe dokita gun ni pe wa si inu word lati wa wa awon eniyan. Ye dako, ye e se fun mi back and back. Ki lo wa nu apamowo. Ara re du lesin mi na ni. O da. Iseju marun pere ni mo fun yin. Ko gbodo ju iseju marun lo o. Iseju marun. Iseju meji gan ti to mi. E se won o. E je. Hello. Mama, ta ki pa ru won bi hospital awa yi. Oh, Lara. Lara, lembe. Ah, Ah, Oh, Bobby wants him calling. Sorry. Seller, who are bo? A barabo. Lasso, fing, woman, a kiddo, kita, auto, de cloudy. Mamma, people are little pewa. Kill a little bit away. Oh, me, Jenny. Oh, me, Kenny. Ah, hello, Jamie, by you. Cheer you, boy, we pay a good of four more inning from Mirror to see you. Four did you shoot me for a baku? It went go go. Eh, no, no more, 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 you can come more lady, dear, who said you mewa, put to more yonly. You're more bonner, you're for that, that you're about to. The boss is if I want a docket, you know, what is any money, you can't take it as no, you feel a little button. Rara, well, she and be by only on the corner for more in the era at your conino, but go our boy lay on my bank, or Jalan Modin, and down a bossy leg and die. I don't want to let him come back to your mom. Baba told me on my ye, Lama, a me from in the camp. I'm not going to tell you that. Come on, Oh, I'm not Oh, my lale for me. Ale, ba, ba, ma, for me. Come on, I'm not going to tell you. I'm security for you. Secure. I'm not security. Ba, security. Ba, ba, ba. Of breastfeeding, I design and produce breastfeeding aprons for mothers that may want to breastfeed in public. I also wrote a book titled Breastfeeding, Getting the Answers. Songs were also composed and poems written to provide information on breastfeeding. Let's listen to two of the songs. For Molonyong, for Molonyong, Oshumefa Kokola is me, and for Molonyong, Oh, Jaggy D. Lay Oshumefa. Oh, Jadoda, Korea, Malepo, Kaiso, Korea, go, Maya, Fama, Loyon, for 
Nigerian Breastfeeding Assembly. The Nigerian Breastfeeding Assembly is a yearly event, a national convergence of all breastfeeding stakeholders. I am the chief convener, and it was organized in collaboration with two other co conveners Dr. Folake Samway and Dr. Oleshi. To put it on record, today is Dr. Samway's birthday. Happy birthday to Dr. Samway. And two days time is my own birthday. Happy birthday to me. The goal of NBA is to ensure cohesion among all breastfeeding stakeholders and partners and guarantee a unified voice that we ask to achieve the set goals of upscaling breastfeeding in Nigeria. My co-convener, Dr. Falaka Samuel, mentioned at one of our discussions that it will be a failure on our part if the prevalence of EBF in Nigeria is still the same after our retirement. We choose not to be failures. In 2019, supported by Alive and Tribe, the NBA has its first assembly in the University of Ibadan. It brought together stakeholders in breastfeeding, including the health sector, development partners, academia, advocates, industries, religious bodies, media practitioners, civil society, and students to tackle the prevalence of EBF in Nigeria. The second and third assembly were virtual and had participants across national regions and even outside Nigeria, facilitated by Alive and Tribe. The 2023 NBA has a spotlight on policy roadmap to maximizing breastfeeding in Nigeria. The areas of breastfeeding as identified by NBA were promotion, support, and protection of breastfeeding, an appropriate policy environment. The barriers to breastfeeding are lack of prenatal education, cultural practices, pressures from family to add other foods and liquids, comfort and ease of the use of infant formula, weak and fragmented health system, healthcare providers' belief and experience. Advocating for the vulnerable. Mr. Vice Chancellor, sir, women, infants, children, and adolescents are at particular risk of malnutrition. Optimizing nutrition early in life, including the first 1,000 days from conception to a child's second birthday, ensure the best possible start in life with long-term benefits. Breastfeeding is a cornerstone of children's survival, nutrition, and early development. Newborns desire the sincere milk, breast milk. It is literally heaven's gift to the world. For the mothers tonight, breastfeeding gives babies a healthy start in life. Woman milk provides all the nutrients, calories, and fluid needed for the baby's health for the first six months of life. It supports the baby's brain and growth, and it's easier for the little one to digest. The nutrients in breast milk adapt to the growing baby's need and does the amount of milk produced by the mother. But it is not just good for babies, but also for mothers. Breastfeeding reduces the risk of high blood pressure, certain breast and ovarian cancer, and type 2 diabetes. The first few days might be challenging because it's a new skill for both mother and child. The letdown of milk is challenging in the atmosphere of anxiety and stress. The production of milk in the first day of birth is as little as 40 to 50 mils of colostrum, which is just enough for the infant. However, most primiparous mothers accept a full cup of breast milk and may be discouraged that they are not able to produce enough milk to feed their infant. The frequency of latching of infants on the breast milk increases the production of milk. Mothers can also breastfeed using different breastfeeding oil that is convenient for both mother and baby. The size and the shape of the breast have nothing to do with the quantity of milk that will be produced but the frequency of latching by the infant. Breastfeeding should not be painful. Although, there may be discomfort at first, but it should be minimal and should go away in the first week of birth. Continuous or severe pain is not normal. This could be due to improper latching that may result into cracked nipples. Cosmetically, the breast is not for fashion, but for nourishment of the growing infants. As young mothers, you can breastfeed and slay with comfortable and elegant wears appropriately designed for breastfeeding. 
for families. Families should create a comfortable home environment where the latching mother can practice and get used to breastfeeding and all that is physically and emotionally required. They can help with household chores and care for the older children. For healthcare providers today, the health institution must be baby friendly at all levels of care, from the primary to the tertiary institutions. There must be a written statement of policy supporting breastfeeding that should be routinely communicated to all. The principle of the International Code of Marketing of Breastfeeding Substitute must be followed in all care facilities. Structured ANC talk. To include 10 steps to successful breastfeeding must be regularly delivered. The dietitian should take this up in ANC and professionally provide detailed head talk on MIYCN. For the community, there is need for environmental changes on breastfeeding protection, promotion and support, and care management within community setting and businesses. This can be achieved by adding to the BFHI, the Baby Friendly Community Initiative, the BFCI, we have its component increased knowledge and skill for community-based organizations, non-air system breastfeeding support group and services, welcoming atmosphere for breastfeeding families in social organizations, worship centers, businesses, and the community. For workplaces, employers should recognize the importance of breastfeeding practices and take proactive steps to create a supportive and positive work environment that recognizes a mother's responsibility to both her job and her child when she returns to work. Employers should provide flexible working hours, adequate facilities for breastfeeding such as crutches and lactation room, and adequate maternity leave, both at the public and private sector. The theme for the 2023 World Breastfeeding Week is Let's Make Breastfeeding and Work Work. Obafemi Awolowo University has a breastfeeding policy that supports lactating mothers, as mentioned by the Vice Chancellor, Professor A.S. Bamre, and the Director of Gender, Dr. Banjo, in an interview by Mark Rip during the 2023 World Breastfeeding Week. Mothers in Obafemi Aola University have early closing hour and paid maternity leave. However, there are very few creatures in academic area that can cater for breastfeeding staff and students. Creatures, and lactation room can be created in each faculty. We are students and staff that are breastfeeding and conveniently breastfeed during work and lecture hours. Lecturers can also support breastfeeding. No harm is done when they breastfeed in your class. For government, government can play a crucial role in supporting breastfeeding through a variety of policies and initiatives. Implementation of six month paid maternity leave and parental policies. We allow mothers and fathers to take time off to care for their newborns. Government can enforce laws that require employers to provide reasonable breaks and private space for mothers to express milk or breastfeed their infants. Hospitals can be encouraged to follow BFHI established by WHO and UNICEF. There should be an inclusion of age appropriate breastfeeding education in school curricula to promote a positive and informed attitude towards breastfeeding from an early age. Government should implement and enforce regulations on the marketing of infant formula to prevent aggressive advertising that may discourage breastfeeding. In collaboration with WHO, UNICEF, and Nutrition Society of Strong State Chapter at a day symposium on creating an enabling breastfeeding environment for nursing mothers, organized by the Oshun State Primary Health Care Development Board. I raise my voice in advocacy to the Oshun State Government for the adoption of six months maternity leave and 14 days maternity leave and other maternal policies in Oshun State. The wife of the governor, Chief Mrs. Titi Lola Adeleke, promised to ensure the approval of six months paid maternity leave and other favorable maternity policy for working mothers in the state. Mentoring. Mr. Vice Chancellor, sir, in 2011, I won the Bill and Melinda Gates Sponsor Fellowship administered by the African Women in Agricultural Research and Development for Mentoring Women in Agricultural Research. It was a two year program where I was mentored formally by Professor K. Taiwo. I was sponsored to attend and present my paper 
at the Breastfeeding and Feminism Conference in the USA in 2012. This completely changed my line of research to advocacy because I was able to understand the importance of protection, promotion, and support for breastfeeding. Our world also gave us the opportunity to have a mentee. I mentored Dr. O. Oladejo, an animal scientist during this period. Dr. Oladejo was not only mentored professionally, but she was also mentored to exclusively breastfeed her baby and continue until the child was 24 months old. This was achieved with the support from Macri as she almost gave up at 18 months. Her achievement was celebrated with an award. This encouraged several first-time mothers to breastfeed their infant exclusively and up to the age of 24 months. So all these mothers in the house today, you are all celebrated again. Several other mothers were mentored in different leadership programs. In the year 2020, during the coronavirus pandemic, I was opportune to participate with other women globally in 1,000 Guess 1,000 Future program by the New York Academy of Science. During the program, I met some girls from Egypt and Syria who were in their teen years, but were focused in their choices of career, all because they were being mentored at their early age in life. In the course of the program, one of the mentors who is in Nigeria asked me, who will tell the Nigerian children all these that we are telling other grace across the globe? I told her, I will be the voice for the Nigerian child. Consequently, a Badana Mentoring Hub was established with the objective of mentoring young undergraduates and young professionals on academic career and business. Abadana Mentoring Hub is an online program and we are currently on our fourth cohort with impact on academic, career and business goal of participants. Award and distinction. Mr. Vice Chancellor, sir, to the glory of God, I have won several awards and travel grants that made me fellows of international bodies and provided opportunity to travel for various scientific conferences in several countries, just, such as Ghana, Senegal, Rwanda, Kenya, Morocco, Uganda, Namibia, South Africa, United States of America, Netherlands, and Israel. I am a fellow of the African Nutrition Leadership Program, fellow of the Leadership for Environment and Development, fellow of African Women in Agricultural Research. I won the next two foundation grant to produce drama for via change communication on breastfeeding, also have the Mashab Scholarship to the Hebrew University of Jerusalem, Israel. I have the Nestle Nutrition Institute Africa Award for Nutrition in Community. I also have the Prestige Anchor Leadership Empowerment and Capacity Building Award for Women Empowerment Activists of the Year. I also have several travel grants. I have collaborated with experts in curriculum development, serve as external examiner to several institutions, reviewers to journal, editors of journal. I have served many Nigerian universities in assessment of promotion to professorial cadre. I've also served as keynote speaker and facilitator in conferences and workshops, guest lecturer in schools, churches, and community programs. In 2011, I also facilitated the NLIC library of 63 medical books donated by Nestle Foundation to the Ezekiah Oluwa Summit Library of the Obafemi Awolo University. Conclusion, Mr. Vice Chancellor, sir, each year, optimal breastfeeding practices have the potential to prevent 103,742 child deaths and prevent over 10 million cases of childhood diarrhea and pneumonia, an important contribution to reducing overall on the five child mortality in Nigeria with all the benefits of breastfeeding. The EBF rate in Nigeria is 29%, indicating that a mere percentage of infants, 0 to 6 months, are exclusively breastfed, leaving 71% of infants not enjoying the benefit of breast milk in their formative years. Embracing and advocating for breastfeeding is not merely a choice, but a crucial commitment to the health and well being of our future generations. By supporting and protecting breastfeeding, we are investing in a foundation of optimal nutrition immune system development, and cognitive growth for infants. Furthermore, breastfeeding promotes maternal well-being, 
strengthening the bond between mother and child and fostering a healthier society as a whole. Breastfeeding is a natural and irreplaceable gift that transcends cultural and social boundaries. In our collective effort to champion breastfeeding, we are contributing to healthier communities, reducing healthcare burdens, and building a sustainable future. Recommendations. This lecture aims to equip participants with the knowledge, tools, and strategies needed to effectively advocate for breastfeeding in their community and beyond. The science of breastfeeding and its advantage should be researched and pushed forward by the academia. There is need to outline evidence-based research on the nutritious value of breast milk and its unparalleled advantage for infants. We need to get past the obstacle of breastfeeding. All breastfeeding stakeholders should determine typical obstacles that prevent or discourage the start and maintenance of breastfeeding. The healthcare provider must support and educate mothers to empower them. Prenatal education should prepare the expectant mother for nursing. There should be promoting of breastfeeding friendly regulations in hospitals to support and ease the practice of breastfeeding. There should be plans to make public and professional settings more accommodating for nursing by giving paid maternity leave, providing lactation rooms and breaks. There is a need to create an efficient communication plan to spread the word about the value of breastfeeding by making use of public campaigns, workshops, and social media. Legislation and policy advocacy is necessary in highlighting the significance of breastfeeding policy at the local, national, and international level. Advocating for breastfeeding is not only an investment in the health and well-being of our children, but also a step towards building a more supportive and nurturing society. As advocates, my audience today has the power to make a positive impact on the lives of mother and children, laying the foundation for elder and happier generations to come. <laughs> Acknowledgement. Mr. Vice Chancellor, sir, I will start by expressing my gratitude to this great institution, Obafemi Awolowo University, for providing the opportunity to be employed years ago as a graduate assistant. At the graduation ceremony in 1994, the then Vice Chancellor, Professor Wiley Omole, made the announcement that all first class graduates will be hired by the university, being a first class graduate. I started my, my professional career in this distinguished Obama University. This university had helped me grow academically and professionally. In the month of August 2023, I was given the opportunity to advocate for breastfeeding on the university community radio, Great FM 94.5. I really appreciate the Deputy Vice Chancellor Administration, Professor Daramola, for that opportunity. It has been a great privilege to become a professor in the same university that raised me, and I'm eternally grateful. I'm indebted to so many people, my teachers, at the undergraduate level and postgraduate level, especially my supervisors, Dr. Yabo Dadi Yefa at the master's level and late Professor Ayo Akinyele at the PhD level. Thank you all for the mentorship. My professional body, Nutrition Society of Nigeria, and the staff of the Dietetic Unit of OAUTH. Thank you for giving me the platform to speak about my passion breastfeeding on various platforms. To our life and tribe, I'm indeed very grateful for the support for MBA program from inception to date. To the staff and colleagues of the Faculty of Agriculture, College of Health Sciences, Faculty of Basic Medical Sciences, Department of Consumer Sciences and Hospitality Management, to Professor A.J. Faridi and Professor A.O. Ajayi, thank you for teaching me scientific writing. To the staff and colleagues in my new department, the Department of Human Nutrition, and dietetics. I say I'm indeed very grateful. So my students, we did this together. With your hard work, in our research work, and community service, we all work for Macri. So my friends, thank you for being there for me. So my spiritual parent in our CCG, the real boat mega cathedral family, I appreciate your prayers, support, and encouragement. So my parents, Papa and Mama Wodiya, 
thank you for training all of us. Especially your girl children. Even when you are advised, that is not worth it to train a girl child. Daddy, you always call me Giwe, and Evan stamped it. Glory to God that you are seated today with mommy, witnessing the inaugural lecture of your little girl. My siblings and their spouses, you are my backbone, even at difficult times. You are there to support me. God bless you all. To my immediate family, I'm greatly indebted. My son, Oluwag Baji, our experience as mother and child changed the course of my research to breastfeeding. Oluwag Beye, your life has really taught me patience. Oluwag Bola, the Lord indeed satisfied me with the gift of you. And Ade Banke Itiade, you are a blessing to my family, to my husband, the dean, faculty of environmental design and management, <laughs> Professor Lucia Gwade Bayo Ogumba, the husband of my youth, my soulmate, my love, my friend, and darling. Thank you for your support and encouragement all the way. I also thank the entire Awojiya. Olu Yemi and Ogumba families. God bless you all. To all health care providers, doctors, nurses, and community health workers, all fathers and grandmothers, you are my breastfeeding support club members. Thank you for the good work and continuous advocacy for the vulnerable. I am grateful to the planning committee of this inaugural for a good job done. For this wonderful audience, I thank you for coming. To God Almighty, that made it possible for me to stand here, for being my source, my strength, my keeper, my helper, my sustainer, the giver of wisdom and understanding. No one some up to, Lord, to run the journey of my life. You have been faithful. Thank you all for your attention. I love you, Lord. For your mercy never fails me all my days. For your mercy never fails me and all my days. I've been held in your hands. From the moments that I wake up until I lay my head, oh, I will sing. Of the goodness of God All my life you have been faithful All my life you have been so, so good With every breath that I am able sing of the goodness of God. I love your voice. You have led me through the fire in my darkest night. You were close like no other. I've known you as a father, I've known you as a friend, oh I have lived in the goodness of God. Of the goodness 